and that is uh, uh, an imbalance between the amount of capital in the market and the amount of stock that's on the market. Uh, we think this will uh, play out during the course of this year. And we did some work just looking at the amount of capital that might be uh, out there and looking for real estate this year. And we looked at, uh, for example, superannuation, which we know has grown uh, enormously. We know that there's still twice as much uh, uh, superannuation money sitting in cash that there should be. So if there's a reallocation to uh, other asset classes, some of that will come to real estate, listed and uh, unlisted. And uh, we think that could be as much as $10 billion sitting there. We know that wholesale funds are getting organised again, and we think there could be up to a billion dollars uh, of acquisitions uh, in 2011 from that, from that sector as well. We know private investors every year tip in about a billion and a half dollars into commercial real estate turnover. Uh, we know as well that the, uh, the A REITs started to come back into the market uh, late last year, and we think that uh, as that trend uh, moves up, it's quite possible that uh, there'll be acquisitions of around the level of uh, $1.5 billion from the A-REITs this year as well. Asian pension funds are, are perhaps the, uh, the next big thing globally in terms of real estate and their potential to acquire real estate. Their allocations to real estate are very low, uh, 1 to 5%, so less than half uh, of that of Australian uh, pension funds. Uh, but the growth in these funds is just uh, quite phenomenal, about $200 billion US uh, additional every year. So we think if we uh, allocate uh, uh, notionally some funds to real estate and then some funds to this part of the world, it could be possible that there's $2 billion sitting on the sidelines, sidelines from Asian pension funds looking for Australian assets as well. We know bank debt is still uh, at relatively low levels, but even at a low level, uh, it's around $6 billion a year. So, so just the back of the envelope exercise, we think there could be about two, $22 billion there uh, looking for real estate uh, this year. And of course, the average annual turnover of real estate in Australia is about $9 billion. So there's that imbalance sort of starting to emerge again between the supply of capital and the, and the stock that might be available. We think it's going to be an interesting uh, uh, issue to watch this year. Will it cause prices to lift quicker than we anticipate? Or will uh, it be a very gradual uh, value uh, cycle change over the next few years? This is one of the issues we'll explore during the uh, presentation this morning. And where does Melbourne sit amongst all that? Well, of course, Melbourne has been the golden boy of investment uh, activity over the last uh, 12 months. Um, this chart shows you in the, in the dark green bars the, uh, the trends in commercial real estate transactions in Australia over the last few years. The light green bar shows you the share of that that's actually taken place in Melbourne. This is across all the commercial property sectors. Now, 45% of all trading in Australia was in Melbourne last year. So it really does show you that the fundamentals are strong, the outlook is good and investors are, have been very interested in, uh, in Melbourne. And the big issue is, uh, can it, can it can keep going? Uh, will, will Melbourne continue to provide the stock uh, that investors uh, are looking for, especially the prime stock? So I guess the context overall, we do think there'll be a stronger, uh, higher economic growth this year compared to last year, but it's still going to be patchy. And it's still going to be a, a, not a normal year, a different year. The year will uh, build with momentum as we move through, and uh, the effect of mining is going to be very important. We know that population growth is easing uh, across Australia at the moment, and Victoria has been a great beneficiary of the, of the very high levels of population growth that Australia has seen over the last few years. So as that eases, it's important to be aware that that's actually happening, because it may start to influence some of the sectors, especially residential. The biggest risk for the year ahead, uh, domestically, we think, is still uh, inflation. We do assume that in response to that, uh, the interest rates will be rising before the end of the year, most likely in the latter half. Investment demand is high. We know it's switching at the moment more towards domestic uh, than, than foreign. But overall, the Melbourne situation, the Melbourne property fundamentals, still look very good. They're very sound, and, uh, and uh, so uh, you'll see that reflected in our forecast for each of the sectors. Let's have a close look then uh, now at the Melbourne CBD uh, office market. I guess we've been watching Melbourne very closely for a number of years now. We've seen this supply gap a year, or initially it was two years, 2011 and 2012 were always going to be years when there were very little uh, office completions actually coming into the market, a new office space. It's interesting, as we've got closer to that period, uh, 2012 started to get filled up. Um, projects were indeed uh, coming off the, uh, off the drawing boards. Refurbishment projects, which have a shorter timeline, have come forward. So the supply gap that once lasted two years uh, is now really one year, and that's this year. But it's very influential in bringing vacancy down 
through, uh, through 2011. The projects uh, that, we're for, that we're monitoring, 13 projects all up, are still very much dominated by the Docklands in terms of new stock over the next five years. But there are a number of bigger refurbishment, refurbishment projects now that influence our forecast uh, in the traditional uh, CBD area. Interestingly, in 2011, our forecast and our expectations for the expansion in occupied space have actually come back a little. We think the market's reached a point that uh, expansion of business uh, may be partly frustrated by the lack of leasing options in the market as vacancy gets so low. And this is uh, something you do often see uh, as vacancy drops uh, in office markets. But we think this year that uh, net absorption will pull back somewhat, but it will start to expand as more options come back into the market. Again, in some ways, the supply will lead the demand in Melbourne as it has done uh, for a number of years. But still, there'll be a very uh, nice balance between the demand and supply over the next five years. We think vacancy by the end of this year will be 5.5% here in the CB or over the river in the CBD office market, and that will certainly be enough to start to see rents lifting. And... Uh, we think that uh, rents will breach the $500 per square metre mark, uh, face rents on an average uh, prime uh, office building, uh, by 2013. We've, but now we get uh, the joint influences of a drop in incentives, uh, starting from now and stretching over the next five years, a gentle decline in incentives. So face rents are rising, effective rents will also be rising. I think the focus in 2011 is very much shifting to the, uh, to the rise in effective rents uh, around the country. It's interesting when you do now compare Melbourne, you see that Melbourne and Sydney have always been very similar in our forecast for this uh, uh, period of 2011-2012. We think the rent growth will be around 7 or 8% uh, this year and next year in, in both Melbourne and Sydney. Probably the market that surprised us a little, where we have changed our forecast in the last six months, has been Perth, uh, where the mining sector is now starting to lease uh, office space outside of pre-lease projects, and it's really starting to bring vacancy down uh, faster than we thought. And uh, so we're seeing quite strong uh, rental growth forecasts there as well. But look at the bottom line, the effective rental uh, uh, increases are starting to really uh, drive uh, a lot of interest, I know, from investors now too. And the competition between Melbourne and Sydney is set to be fierce again, I suspect, over the next uh, year or two. Turning to the investment market, we know that last year there was uh, almost $1.5 billion of uh, office property transacted in the, in the Melbourne CBD. Uh, the biggest year for, uh, for over a decade, and it certainly gave us plenty of evidence to show that uh, there was some uh, mild compression in yield, and I think this is uh, one of the fascinating areas that we're looking at at the moment. Uh, will yields uh, uh, compress uh, rapidly or gently? Uh, will the risk margins uh, will certainly be compromised somewhat as uh, yield starts to compress, but the cost of debt's going to remain high. So if you're a purist and you want to keep that risk margin in place, you really can't see a forecast with uh, aggressive yield compression in the future. So our forecast assume that there'll be uh, around 25 basis points per annum uh, compression in the, uh, in the average yield, as you can see here. So we'll certainly start to see more sixes as the year moves on in the, uh, in the CBD office market, but not an aggressive uh, uh, compression in yield, but certainly enough to add to value. And uh, with the income side improving as well, it's quite possible that total returns will be back up close to double digits uh, by the end of this year and into uh, early next year. So the CBD in summary, we certainly uh, see that uh, absorption is uh, somewhat counterintuitively set to ease because the number of leasing options in the market uh, are reducing through 2011. We know that the supply gap is here. We've been uh, watching it uh, emerge over the last few years and it's certainly going to help bring vacancy down this year. Uh, Melbourne will have the lowest vacancy rate in the country by the end of the year as it does now, but uh, even less at 5.5%. Face rents, we think, will rise about 7%, 7 to 8% this year and next year, and about a 25 basis point tightening in yield this year and next year as well. So it gives you uh, a reasonable uh, amount of detail on how we see the, uh, the forecast for the CBD office market. But there are some of our professionals here in the local market who are out there in the field every day uh, doing deals and learning a lot about uh, what's going on. So we thought we should tap into their knowledge this morning as well. So uh, I'm pleased to uh, invite to the stage uh, Mark Costa uh, and Shane Burns to tell us a bit more about the local market. Please uh, join me in welcoming uh, Mark and Shane. <laughs> 